Jesus Bible and Current Events from a Christian Perspective, Battling Spiritual Wickedness in High Places, One Podcast at a Time. This is the High Places Podcast. Hello everyone, this is Jim. Um, First of all, did you like the audio drama from last time? The Cow and the Duck? Come on, that's pretty funny, I thought. Um, Someone on YouTube didn't think it was funny though. They complained about it apparently. Somebody did. But it's back up there now from the podcast and I'm going to put it up as its own video too. So, uh, yeah. Um, Yes, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, So even when you're trying to be subtle, um, people will find a way to be mad at a cow and a duck. Anyway, um, so we touched on a little bit last time. The uh, baker in Colorado uh, is being sued again for the third time. And I think by another activist, and I think the activist that was like behind the whole um, Colorado Civil Rights Commission complaint the second time uh, Jack Phillips uh, was sued. And so, um, it's just relentless. And I've said it before, uh, when, um, people try to deny Christians their rights, they should sue for huge amounts of money, like not, you know, piddly stuff. And I mean, like hundreds of millions of dollars, punitive damages. Um, cause look what happened to this Jack Phillips guy. The second time after this was after the Supreme court ruling that the Colorado civil rights commission went after him for the second time. So nobody even cares what the Supreme Court says anymore. Um, He did sue, but he sued for like, I think it was one and a half million dollars, something like that. And then they dropped the suit, but then he dropped his suit. Because, you know, he's being a nice guy. And, uh, but look what happens. He gets sued for the third time. So now he's got legal costs again. And so this time, in my opinion... He should sue for huge amounts of money. And even if the other person drops the case, he should continue his lawsuit. Somebody needs to pay when Christians are attacked like this. Because again, I've said it before, if it doesn't cost these people anything, they will just continue to do it. And you see that with this guy three times, twice after a Supreme Court ruling in his favor. And other Christ- they go after other Christians all the time, too. So by not making these people pay, these activists, by not making them pay, that just means they have money to go and file more lawsuits uh, and, and more time to do it. But if they're busy having to pay back the lawsuits they lose, uh, then uh, maybe they won't have time to do this anymore. And they certainly won't have the finances to do it anymore. So I hope he sues them. And I hope uh, he doesn't drop his suit until someone writes him a big, fat, gigantic check. Because that's the only thing that uh, people seem, um, these people seem to care about. And it's not even like a spiteful thing. It's, um, It's how they operate. And so you have to take away their funding. You have to hit them in the finances. Uh, Otherwise, because look at how the legal system and lawsuits are used as a weapon over and over again. I mean, just all sorts of things. I think they were going after the, um, what is it, the Sisters of the Poor again, because, uh, you know, they don't want to, there was some mandate in their state where they have to offer contraceptives uh, to their employees as part of their health plan. Um, And it's like, uh, they're Catholic, they don't believe in contraception. Uh, and so it, it just doesn't matter. As long as these people have the money to keep filing lawsuits, they're going to do it until you just wear down. And again, if it doesn't cost them anything, then they're just going to look for more people to attack. So um, it just as a means of stopping them or slowing them down, uh, I think it uh, it needs to happen. Um, yeah, what was the... Here, I had the article with the... Uh, uh, the, little, the nuns who previously won a religious exemption from the Affordable Care Act. Um, this was at the Supreme Court. There was a couple things that the Supreme Court kind of punted on. Um, coalition of states led by California, big surprise, uh, sued to block the implementation 
of the rules. Um, but th to block, because the sisters of the poor got a pass on, on having to do this. Um, and so from the uh, new uh, Health and Human Services uh, secretary, they were granted an exemption. Um, so they, they're involved in this. And the Supreme Court, they kind of left this hanging out there and nobody knows what, uh, what to do now since the ruling was kicked back. And they kicked back this case in Oregon. You remember this from a number of years ago, the cupcake bakers who wouldn't do a gay wedding again. Um, and they were, they were nailed by the Oregon Bureau of Labor and Industries. And I think that went to the Oregon Supreme Court. And these guys, they had, it was a husband and wife, Melissa and Aaron Klein. They had to wind up paying this person who sued them, who, who lodged the complaint, $135,000. And remember, these are the folks they tried to go on GoFundMe to get some money to pay back this settlement or this decision against them. And GoFundMe like canceled their, their thing they were doing, their fundraiser, uh, because, you know, they don't want these people to have a way to, to pay. They want to crush them and drive them out of business, which they actually did. And the Supreme Court refused to hear this. They kicked it back to the Oregon uh, Supreme Court, I think it was, and s it told them to, uh, you know, re-examine the case in light of the Supreme Court's ruling a couple years ago in favor of the Colorado baker. Well, why would they do that? It didn't stop the state of Colorado from going after that baker again. Why do they think the uh, Oregon uh, Supreme Court and the state of Oregon is going to do any different? They're just going to ignore the Supreme Court as well. So, I, it, you know, it's like somebody's got to settle this because this is all leading up to this Equality Act where they're adding LGBT stuff to the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And then it's going to trump any other protection that's in that act. Um, and so the Supreme Court's going to need to um, decide on this whole religious liberty thing. It's so funny to me that the same people that um, scream bloody murder about separation of church and state um, can't wait to get the government involved in putting Christian businesses out of business for... Uh, standing by their religious beliefs. And it's so funny because the line you always hear is, well, you know, if they're open to the public, then they're obligated to serve everybody. Uh, really? Tell that to these social media companies who are censoring people. YouTube and all these other ones. Who was the one recently? Was it Pinterest? The photo sharing uh, website? They banned, who were they? Let me see. Uh, Live Action, an anti-abortion group. Um, they, they were blocked um, because Pinterest had listed them as a pornography site. <laughs> and they said that they, uh, they cited them for medical misinformation and conspiracies. And so they violated the company's policy. So um, they've been apparently permanently banned. So what happened to if you're open for business to the public, you're obligated to serve everybody? Uh, apparently, that's not a two-way street. And so that's what I mean. These anti-Christian zealots, um, they use the law when it's convenient, uh, and they use it to attack Christians but they don't adhere to the law themselves and they don't even adhere to their own rhetoric. Uh, they're in the public square and yet they're blocking people who um, they don't agree with. And so, um, yeah, you have a lot of these, um, these tech companies, uh, especially, I mean, this was all called out by a guy who um, used to work there. And uh, he talked about, you know, he saw this sort of stuff going on. And his quote was, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he did this because he saw wrongdoing and the normalization of censorship within big tech companies is un-American. And so there are still a few people who um, uh, think that we have some sort of freedoms in this country. 
Um, but it's amazing. These tech com companies, they're acting like mon the monopolies they are. And they're basically writing their own rules. And because people are so addicted to this social media stuff, um, you know, they're willing to uh, put up with censorship, give up their free speech rights, um, have religion, uh, i.e. Christianity, uh, discriminated against um, just so they can, you know, post selfies of themselves online. <laughs> um, so narcissism trumps freedom, uh, apparently. Um, and so, I mean, there's just this, um, there's so much of this stuff uh, going on. There was a, a Republican, I think, member of Congress also, who I think used to be in the tech industry, uh, William Hurd from Texas. Um, and so he, he was like a cybersecurity guy. And this is so funny because there's this black hat conference um, yeah, heard was a, he was a former CIA, an undercover CIA officer. Um, so he, he dealt with cybersecurity and this black hat thing. This is that cybersecurity conference. Um, it's coming up in uh, Vegas in August. Um, and he was invited to speak. Um, but because he's pro-life, a bunch of activists uh, got on him and pressured black hat to disinvite him from this thing. But the really funny thing is um, the TechCrunch uh, security editor, Zach Whitt uh, Whitaker, he got on Twitter and said that, um, that black hat's invitation of this guy uh, was an affront to diversity. Um, William Hurd is a black guy. And so, and so diversity, see, this is where like English isn't really English anymore. Diversity doesn't mean what the dictionary says it means. Diversity isn't people with different opinions being welcomed. Um, that isn't what diversity means anymore. Diversity is a code word. It means pro-abortion, pro-gay, pro-Marxist, um, you know, pro all, all these, these uh, just crazy lefty things. That's what diversity means. It, it, you could just scramble the letters, um, but it doesn't, uh, and, and it would still mean all these crazy Marxist things. Um, but it doesn't mean diverse, diversity of thought, uh, diversity of viewpoint. Um, because people are being censored. This guy who has expertise in this area is being censored um, because he doesn't want to kill kids. <laughs> wow. Um, and they tried to attack him as like um, having an atrocious voting record on women's rights. Um, so wait, if you're against killing children, you're somehow anti-woman. And this is despite the fact that he voted in favor of things for um, uh, equal pay uh, for women. Um, he voted in favor of an act that addressed violence against women. And he even voted for this Equality Act that tax on LGBT stuff to the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And yet, because he was not in favor of killing children because they were inconvenient to the oversexed people that couldn't keep themselves from engaging in sex and getting pre uh, pregnant, um, because he didn't want to kill some kids, um, he's an affront to diversity. This black guy who voted in favor of the Equality Act. <laughs> So again, so this is Romans 1. This is a depraved mind. Logic doesn't factor in anymore. The meaning of words doesn't factor in anymore. Um, so yeah, if you spend any time reading TechCrunch, uh, don't do it anymore. Um, because these guys are not on your side. These are the enemies of God. These are the children of the devil. Uh, this world system that God has given the devil a degree of control over, um, this system is set up 
uh, to oppose God, uh, his holiness, his laws, uh, and his people, and uh, to squelch the gospel of Jesus and promote all this wicked stuff as though it's normal. And if you stray even a little bit, even the slightest bit, like not wanting to kill kids, that is not acceptable because when it comes to, to totalitarians, it's 100% adherence or you are an enemy. And you'll get sued or you'll be driven out of business or you'll be fined or you'll be disinvited uh, from conferences that you're um, wildly qualified for just because uh, these uh, Marxist totalitarian children of the devil uh, want 100% adherence. Um, who was that guy, too, that uh, there was a ruling against that guy who did the videos, the undercover videos of Planned Parenthood selling baby parts, uh, which is, of course, a federal crime. He was the one that was brought up on charges in the state of California. And I think he owes like $195,000 now. They fined him. So exposing a federal crime <laughs> will get charges levied against you. So what about when, you know, 60 Minutes does undercover uh, reporting, things like that? Uh, why are news outlets allowed to do those things? Uh, well, because they have the uh, approved narrative. And so this is what I mean. The laws, this whole system is set up against God and his people. And so um, why does this matter? Well, for any number of reasons. But so something happened last week um, that kind of led to the whole um, having to reissue that uh, audio drama about the cow and the duck. Um, uh, and we've talked about this a little bit before how um, especially young people uh, who are raised in the church, but this isn't exclusively to young people. There are lots of people in lots of churches um, that talk about being Christians. Um, but when they're given an opportunity to choose um, what they want to do with their time, how they want to behave, um, or whose side they want to be on. And so when you have issues like abortion, uh, you have issues like all this LGBT stuff. Um, people more and more, because there are so many activist groups, individuals, companies um, that want this adherence, they are forcing people to make decisions that you're either going to side with them um, or in a lot of these cases, you're going to side with God, one or the other. And if you choose to side with God, uh, these children of the devil are going to make you pay. And the fact of the matter is, uh, for most people, they're not willing to pay. And even a lot of people who call themselves Christians, because there are tares among the wheat, just like Jesus said, Matthew chapter 13. Um, and there is going to be a sifting uh, and a separating of the wheat from the tares. And so when people are faced with a choice, um, you know, are they gonna are they gonna uh, take the slings and arrows of this world and uh, this devilish system? Um, more and more people are not standing up. Uh, they are not willing to have their comfortable life taken away, their plans uh, shaken, uh, their um, a destiny for what they want their standard of living to be and what they want to be able to do with their time and uh, which group of people they are accepted by. And so um, they will um, deny Jesus. They will side against him. Uh, they'll still call themselves Christians. Um, but when it comes to a choice between God's position on an issue or the world's position on an issue, they'll take the world's position because they want what the world has to offer. Friendship, money, career, uh, all those things. They, they don't want to have to deal with um, what Jesus said we would have to deal with, uh, which is persecution, which is being ostracized, which is being hated uh, for his sake. 
even though Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Um, but people, Christians, people who call themselves Christians, they're going to have to choose now. This is coming. This is everywhere, everywhere. Um, so go ahead and try to be an out-of-the-closet Christian at a tech company. Uh, you hear all these people who, you know, send out these emails, these former employees or current employees that say stuff, but, uh, you know, they don't want their name mentioned because they know there'll be retribution. Try to open a business that deals with the public. The activists, if they find out you're a Christian, they're going to be all over you. And then people are going to have to choose. And so this is why this whole affection for this culture is such a dangerous thing for Christians to get into. This is why it's bad for the church to try to look like the culture, uh, to try to appeal, appeal to the culture by being like the culture, because they're staking everything. They're staking their church, their image, all this other stuff on being like the culture, being like a culture that hates God, that hates God. So why would you want to imitate God's enemies? Why would you want to be so fond of the things that the devil has to offer you, that God's enemies have to offer you? And you get so connected to these things, whether it's entertainment or media or materialism or whatever, that when you have to choose, you've spent so much of your life chasing after, being entertained by, being pleasured by this world system that you don't want to lose it. And so people choose to deny God instead all the while calling themselves Christians. And it's those fake Christians that are going to be the ones that attack the real Christians. Uh, you already see it. There's a presidential candidate um, who calls himself a Christian that attacks real Christians. Uh, the leading Democratic candidate um, uh, right now, Joe Biden, he's supposed to be a Catholic. He's doubling down on this abortion stuff. Uh, you know, so you ask Joe, he'll tell you he's a Christian. But um, is he picking God's side with these issues? Of course not. And so it's these people who are going to claim to be Christians and claim to carry the banner of Christianity who are going to call real Christians the outsiders, um, the, the, you know, right-wing nut jobs, um, the cultists. They're going to be the ones leading the charge. Because they're the ones that want to be accepted by the world most. And the world wants to accept a devilish, quote-unquote, Christian. So, God told us in 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 15, Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the Father's love is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, isn't the Father's, but is the world's. The world is passing away with its lusts, but he who does the will of God remains forever. Don't love the world, um, because it's the exact opposite of what God wants. The world's values are the opposite of God's values. Why do you think there's been this systematic attack on the family over the last X number of decades, starting with divorce, then fornication, the sexual revolution, birth control so you could have sex without kids? And so one of the biggest things that would dissuade pe people from having sex is the responsibility of having to raise children as a result uh, if they weren't ready for it. That was taken away with contraception. Um, now you can have uh, kids without sex. You have same-sex couples that are, you know, being implanted and had third-party donors doing all this stuff. And so, it, it, yeah, and then you have the LGBT thing, and it's a, it's dis, a destruction of, of the family because that's what God set up. So anything, this whole world system is against the fundamental elements of God. 
just the most fundamental things. And so all this stuff that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, fornication, uh, or just wanting stuff, wanting pleasure, wanting an easy life, the lust of the eyes, covetousness, and the pride of life. I want what I want. And if I've got a cave to the world to get it, uh, well, too bad for God. But God tells us here not to do this. And so this is why Christians really need to stop being so much like this culture. You might as well walk around with devil horns on your head. If you're really, if you're going to go ahead and imitate God's enemy, you might as well start looking like him too. But remember, this world and the devil and the degree of control he has over this world, it's all going away. The world is passing away with its lusts. But he who does God's will, and we do God's will if we're truly saved, because God changes us, regenerates us, the desire of our heart is to obey God. Obedience to God is the evidence of salvation, not the means of salvation, but the evidence of salvation. And he who does God's will remains forever. Long after this world and this wicked system and the devil and his children are gone. So chasing after this worldly stuff now is wildly short-sighted. And so if you're, if you're a parent raising your kid and bringing your kid to church and thinking your kids uh, save because they memorize Bible verses and go to church when you drag them to church. Um, we've said before, wait till they turn 18 or move out of the house. Then you're going to find out if they were really saved. Or if you give them the option to decide what they want to do on their own uh, on Sunday mornings, you're going to be surprised too. Uh, sadly, in a lot of cases, four out of five, if you, if you look at the data. Um... So you can do all those things, and I'm not saying it's bad to take your kids to church. Um, but if when you get home from church and the other six days of the week, you're up to your eyeballs in this world, and you're chasing after the things of this world, and you're valuing the things of this world, and you spend X number of nights at home in front of the television soaking up the media of this world, or their video games, or buying a bunch of stuff because you like all this materialistic stuff that the world has to offer, you know what? You're teaching your kids a whole lot of stuff. A whole lot of stuff. And so please don't act surprised when they turn 18 and you never see them at church again. Or they go off to college and they come back and all of a sudden um, they don't care what God says about LGBT, this, that, or anything else. Um, they just don't want their friends to think they're weird. And so they're going to side with their friends in this world. So don't be surprised. So you have to model this behavior, um, proper behavior, and be obedient to God and stay away from this wicked culture. Because I'm telling you, um, I have some firsthand experience with this. Uh, this culture has taken your kids and it's taken people who used to go to church and it's taken people who still call themselves Christians. And um, as soon as they have to make a choice, they choose the world. So um, really, um, spend your time uh, showing your kids and showing your friends, showing the people that are around you uh, that you don't need the stuff of this world because it's all passing away anyway. Um, and we have an eternity to look forward to. And so all this stuff that seems so incredibly important here and now is, is it's, it's an afterthought uh, in the scope of eternity. Um, so why would, why would we even want to risk denying God because we've gotten too close to this world? So uh, just stay away, really, because all this stuff is coming and um, the consequences are getting worse and worse. And so... Um, uh, you're going to have to choose soon. So, uh, then the tighter a grip you have on the things of this world, the harder it's going to be to let them go. So loosen that grip. And then if they fall out of your hand, it isn't going to matter much anyway because you weren't holding on that tight. So, yeah. That's what's going on. Um, thanks, everybody, for listening. 
uh, feel free to uh, drop us a line. Uh, if you'd like to make a comment or have a question, podcast at jesusforsinners.com. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Take care. God bless. <music>